I just brought the car back from the Vancouver Collector Car Show and Auction. Uh, we took it out to show off the new direction that the Zolico was going to go. Um, I have decided to switch it from the turbo three-cylinder to the BR6 Volkswagen uh, turbocharged V6 and a 6B simply because uh, it's more feasible for me to go after the supercar market than the eco car or economy car venue that I was originally going at simply because this is a hand-built car and it's going to be fairly cost prohibitive. Um, I'm still looking for investors so I took it to this car show and I had some really good contacts and I'm very hopeful that somebody will come through and decide to join with me and that we can partner up and build this car. Now I will give you a bit of a walk around with it to show you some more of the details. I've got a statistical analysis sheet that I've made up that compares it to all the existing, well some existing exotic and muscle cars that are being produced right now and you'll see a dramatic reduction in horsepower required simply because of the efficiency of this body design. So I'll grab the camera now and uh, walk over and walk around with it. And I apologize for any kind of shaking or stumbling, but uh, I'm not a uh, Hollywood mogul by any means. I'm just trying to build a car. So bear with me. Thank you and we'll get going. Now I've had some questions regarding the body as far as uh, like how are we going to how do you get the the how do you get the tires off if you get a flat tire? Well, if you look carefully here in the front, you'll see the body line that's showing the skirts that will be removable and I'll come around to the back here. Now you can you might be able to make out the the skirt there in the in the tire area. Now this portion of the body is going to be changing its uh, visual effect because that skirt is actually going to wrap around the front of the tire and taper up into the underbody venturi and this area in front of the rear tires is actually going to be a diffuser on both sides to let air flow out from underneath the car. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier I think in some of my other videos the underbody is a Formula One styled underbody venturi so the faster the car travels the more downforce it creates and that downforce is very efficient in that it only creates 25% of the drag of wings or spoilers that you were going to be doing to, to do the same thing. Thereby, you don't need as much horsepower to make this thing sail along. Now, um, I, think you, I think everybody has probably seen my tail lights. I'll just come around the back here. And you can see the molded in tail lights. I know I've, I've had many comments from people that uh, it's very Jetsons like and actually I, I, I consider that a compliment you know that's a very futuristic little child's program but uh, um, it is rather enjoyable but there's the rear view of it now we'll walk around and I'll show you those uh, statistical analysis charts that I was talking about now that uh, vent you see just above the wheel skirt that is the uh, that'll be open that'll be an opening where the air pressure from inside the wheel will be escaping and also allow flow through air through the uh, radiator and intercooler this uh, v6 i was talking about is going to be intercooled and turbocharged it'll produce 375 horsepower at the beginning for the first prototype and uh, it's remarkable what the 375 horsepower will do in a, I figure it's going to be about a 1700 to 1900 pound vehicle when it's completed. Now here's my statistical analysis comparison chart. Uh, hopefully you can make it out if you take some time to look at this. The most important number here is the coefficient of drag area number uh, which uh, is the frontal area of the car multiplied by the coefficient of drag. As you can see we have the uh, you know the world's fastest car, the Bugatti Veyron which has a coefficient of drag of 0.41 and the coefficient of drag area of 8.02 you know requires a thousand horsepower to go 253 miles an hour now if you look down at the Zolico with 375 horsepower at the 1700 pounds and the 0.17 coefficient of drag multiplied by the uh, frontal area gives me a 3.35 coefficient of drag area which results in a car that should travel 230 miles an hour run the quarter mile in 10.7 seconds 
and get 60 miles per gallon on the highway whereas the uh, Veyron would get 13 on the highway and you're using a thousand horsepower to push that little baby along and then you can look at all these other vehicles the Vipress RT10 for example is 7.72 uh, runs 11 7 quarter mile top speed 202 um, it's very interesting to note how important that coefficient drag area number is in how much power is required to make the thing go fast and at the same time reduce the fuel consumption now here is my um, who what when where and how chart that I made up for the car show so people could uh, look at it and read it without having to ask me a whole bunch of questions um, like I say I'm looking for funding partners technical collaboration corporate sponsors and viewer feedback of course and customers um, the first prototype is is what's very important here to uh, be able for me to be able to prove and test all these uh, different uh, scientific approaches that I've got in the car um, the other question I've had is how many people can sit in the car well if we walk around here I'll show you that uh, the uh, I've got a sort of a facsimile of the rear seat installed now that front seat right now is adjusted for somebody that's uh, my height which is just about six foot one um, there is uh, about 12 inches of leg room and your legs stretch out and go underneath that front seat right now there's no floor of course but uh, um, and then there's the rear seat where you get two two full-size adults sitting in there side by side your shoulders are touching but you can still fit in there nice and comfortable and you're in a semi reclined position and uh, that's about it there now the other the other question that I've also had is oh, where are the headlights well the headlights are right inside of that side right inside of that in front of that side vent as you look there you can see that long oval shaped um, cut out uh, the, you know I'm nowhere near to the point where I can I need to make molds off of these uh, shapes and then make Lexan and acrylic uh, covers for the lights and stuff like that um, anyway so that's the basic scenario um, I know it's been quite a while since the last video and um, what I'm doing now is I've got a different job I'm working at a different place to uh, hopefully rectify my financial situation so that I can uh, proceed with this car as soon as possible or if an investor comes through shortly um, and that's basically basically what's going on that's I put some shiny paint on it it shows the body way better than the uh, primer did and uh, I will uh, do another video sometime in the future uh, let you know how things are going like I say uh, when one person tries to build a car from scratch design it engineer it and build it it's very time-consuming and money absorbing and it uh, it's, it's it's difficult so I am uh, doing it but it's uh, a long process at this point in time so bear with me and uh, this thing is gonna be a rocket ship and still get 60 miles per gallon talk to you soon